I'm going to break this video down into sections. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you with information. So the first section is going to be um, the starting circuit, we'll call it. So uh, here's my battery box I have in the back of my car. I have a Taylor uh, battery box. I don't know if your car is carbureted or EFI, but it really won't make a difference for what we're doing. But anyways, so here's my battery cable, my positive coming off the battery and going to the solenoid. Um, and then coming off of the solenoid is the starter cable right there that this cable right here with the with the red uh, shrink wrap on there uh, this is the same setup as what you're going to have in your engine compartment it's the only difference is now the starter solenoids in the back of the car uh, here's the the trigger so wire for the solenoid that we were talking about earlier and I just have that ran into my stock harness that just goes to the back of the from the front of the car and comes to the back of the car my car is gutted in the back so it's more of a race car than a street car so but i just ran it to the back of the car N not a big deal standard size wire okay anyways so uh positive battery cable coming off of the the battery goes to one side of the solenoid your cable that goes to your uh the starter itself comes off the solenoid Following along, this is how I have it ran in my car. I have it run all along the floor. You can see right there, you can ignore that red wire. Um, I have it all run here. And on mine, I have it run up to this bulkhead electrical connector. Um, so this is this. This would be the starter cable coming off of the solenoid going to the starter. Also, I have my connection shrink wrap. Make sure you shrink wrap all your connections. Uh, I just drilled a hole in the wheel, wheel well area. And on the other side of this connector, it looks exactly the same. The cable goes through, bolts onto the other side, and goes to the starter from there. Now, you can't see the other side of this from outside the car because the plastic wheel liner covers it up. But we'll go into the engine compartment now. See right here I have it routed through the shock tower I put a grommet on there so the cable doesn't rub on the metal and short out and then this cable just runs down to the starter solenoid uh, if you have a standard starter on your car this is a setup that you're gonna have so that's the basics of the starting circuit the next thing I'm going to cover is the charging circuit Okay, now for the charging circuit, normally you have a cable that comes off the back side of the alternator. It uh, normally will like bolt to the back side of the alternator. And that cable will go from the back of the alternator to the battery connection. It's normally marked B-A-T-T -T on the back of the alternator. Um, that cable, that B-A-T-T -T connection goes, has to go from the alternator to the battery because that's what keeps the battery charged that sends whatever your alternator output this is a 3g alternator so it puts out like 14 volts 15 volts something like that so in order to get that 15 volts to the battery i have to run a wire off of the back of the alternator and it has to go to the has to run all the way in this case all the way to the back of the car back to the battery so how i did that is is I've got a let me get up here I got a heavy gauge wire which is right here you can see that's a large diameter heavy gauge wire and it go this is the wire that's going to connect to the back connection on the back of the alternator and then I have it run into this electrical it's a mega fuse it's actually like for a car stereo system the reason I have this on this setup on here is should there be some sort of short or electrical spike with the alternator, I don't want it burning this wire coming off the alternator going all the way through the interior and back to the car. I don't want to start a fire. So this is a big uh, 250 amp fuse. And it's, it's um, like I said, I mean, it, it's there. So that way if I have a voltage spike or something, worst case scenario, it's going to melt this wire. And it's going to blow the fuse, but it won't harm this wire 
and this is a about the same gauge wire a little bit smaller going to the back of the car it won't harm this it'll only melt this wire and melt that okay so following this wire this charge wire we're gonna go to the back of the car and we'll see how that connects okay so that wire is run all the way to the back of the car okay and where that connects to this is the wire right here okay you can see it I have it connecting to a fusible link this is another secondary safeguard this runs to the positive side of the starter solenoid where your positive battery cable goes on and this sends juice from the front of the car the alternator back here to the battery and that's what keeps the battery charged so that's the charging side of the circuit Okay, what I want to talk about next is supplying power to your the rest of the electrical system on the car, powering up the rest of the car, like for your headlights, um, your radio, your heater, all that stuff. So since the battery is in the back and that stuff would normally, the battery would normally be up front and that stuff would connect up front, this is how it connects on the, on the back of the car since the battery is in the back. So here's my kill switch. And you can see I have a heavy gauge wire coming off of the kill switch, okay? And that wire is, runs from there, and this wire is going to run to the front of the car. This wire is going to supply power to the front of the car. So you can see it goes all the way along. You can see my car is kind of gutted. It's, it's more of a race car than a street car. But it just follows along that harness in there, okay? And goes back up to the front of the car. So let's look at the engine compartment. Okay, this is where that wire comes into the engine compartment from the back of the car, okay? Now, this is a junction block. Um, I bought this from it's my local supplier, okay? all the, It looks kind of like a jumbo mess of wires, but... Um, and so, this is like the wiring that would go inside the car. So, this is supplying power to this junction block, and anything, um, you know that needs power electrically in the car, you know, the, the, like the, the main, the fuse box, the main power supply and all that. This wire feeds the main power supply. So all of those connectors that need power all join together here. Okay. I hope that makes sense. But like I said, this is main supply coming in and this would normally, like these wires would normally attach to the positive side of your starter solenoid. But since the starter solenoids in the back, um, in order to maintain, you know, the factory harness, the way the factory harness was set up and not have to modify that like crazy, I just ran a power wire up to the front of the car. Now, one thing that I don't have on mine yet that I still have to put on, I haven't put on yet, is another one of those, um, like, mega fuses. So, right now, when my car is live, this is live and it doesn't have any, any protection. So, I still have to add a, a mega fuse to that, which I have. I just haven't put it in yet. But anyways, um, so all these connections would normally go to your starter solenoid, but since the starter solenoid is in the back of the car now, I ran a power supply wire up to the front to this junction box, and then everything attaches here. That way my factory harness is untouched up here. I didn't have to modify my factory harness in any way. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about is the master kill switch. Now, how I have this, how this works is it's just a pull, push, pull setup, they call it. I have this on the back. Push it off, push it in to shut the car off. You can see right now the car is off. When I pull it out, you'll see my dome light come on. Dome light's on, means the car's got power. Push back in, the car is dead. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, so right now electrically the car is dead so how I how I have that hooked up is is I have a wire that comes off of the uh, the kill switch and runs up here to the um, the starter solenoid right here and this is a fusible link and this supplies 
this this is what's giving power to the switch so that way when the switch is on the power wire this heavy gauge wire that we just looked at that ran to the front of the car that i just talked about that's how the power is getting to the front of the car from the back of the car is through here and then now it's on see dome lights on when i hit the switch it kills the power so there's no power coming out to this other post so therefore this wire here electrically is dead it's not seeing any power at all so that's how that works now i'm going to demonstrate how the car how the safety switch works for the nhra this is this is how it's going to have to be so right now the car is going to be let me turn the car on you can see everything's coming up my gauges are coming on car is running okay so you can hear the car running everything's fine now let's say there's some sort of emergency and I get into an accident and the racetrack has to kill the power to my car you just hit the switch and it kills the car the car is completely dead electrically now um, that's that's the pretty much how it works that's how you need to have it wired up I hope this helps and if uh, you want you can contact me through Facebook and that and I'll try and walk you through you know in any way that I can and help you out um this thing here this is my ground wire I just have a body ground on it uh, I'm gonna do a chassis ground eventually on it but you know it's been hooked up for over a year now and it's working okay so I'm just gonna leave it like that for now but that's basically it hope this helps One other thing I wanted to show you is um, this is the this is what I use for my like my starter cable. It's like 600 volt. It's welding cable is all that it is. And this is what I run on my car back to front to the starter. So um, that works great. I also I use these kind of fittings. I got these like from basically from the hardware store from Lowe's. Uh, they're Kind of like an industrial thing, but they work good for this application. All I did, though, they're kind of a heavy gauge. It's a thick wall. So in order to make it easier to crimp it, I cut this down the middle here. And then that way, when I stick the cable in there, you know, cut the um, protective covering off. And then, you know, stick that in there like that. And I just take like a hammer and chisel and kind of crimp it down. And then also make sure that you use... Um, shrink wrap on all your connections that way your connections stay clean and dry and another thing too that i found out when i started this is i'm a i'm a kind of a junkyard scavenger so if you go to the junkyard a lot of the factory stuff because the electrical systems on the cars are so sophisticated now they have really nice cables in that that you can use on your car this is like an alternator wire cable set up off of like a ford taurus or something but look, I mean, it's all high quality stuff and it works really good for this. And it looks factory like this has got that nice protective boot. This is what this is where the cable this is the cable that would bolt onto the back of the alternator to that that bat fitting that I was talking about. And it's got a nice little boot that slips over to protect it so you don't get any arcing from metal on metal and stuff. So, I mean, and this is something I got from the junker for like five bucks. So don't necessarily rush out and order a bunch of stuff from Summit. Because if you hit the junkyard, you can find nice factory stuff, too, and make it work for what you need. Um, lastly, this is a company that I dealt with. They're called Mad Enterprises. They're super cool. The guy gave me a ton of information. I bought some stuff from him, so they sent me this stuff. But they give you some really cool wiring diagrams. So, something to think about. Um, you might want to give them a call. The guy will talk your ear off, but he's super knowledgeable, and he helped me. A lot on setting my car up so and I think they have a website too you know it's, it's uh, man enterprises there's a number give him a call if you want he was super helpful